pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, everyone, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, tonight, as you see on our agenda, we have a, uh, a presentation. But first, before we do, we're going to have a roll call. Um, everybody is present. And uh, as far as approval of our agenda, before you, we have any additions or deletions? If not, then uh, the agenda stands as presented. And uh, tonight, we'd like to welcome the Washtenaw County Road Commission. Um, Mark McCullough is over here. He's going to be leading the uh, presentation tonight. Um, and you probably want to uh, introduce the others that are here. But also, Barb Fuller is one of our um, uh, uh, road commissioners. And uh, it's nice to have you with us tonight, Barb, out uh, here at our meeting. So, Mark, take it away. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you to the board for uh, hosting us this evening. Uh, we, we thought it was important to provide an opportunity for the public to hear. Uh, you, you've heard a lot about this, the, the, the project of Chubb and Five Mile. I, I believe a lot of you know the history behind it, but you may not know a lot of the details behind it. Uh, so we thought it was important to come here this evening and provide an opportunity to let the board ask questions as well as uh, constituents from the audience. Uh, my name is Mark McCullough. I am managing the project on behalf of the Washtenaw County Road Commission. As Gary uh, mentioned, uh, Vice Chair Mark Fuller is here. Our County Highway Engineer slash Director of Engineering, Matt McDonnell, is present. Uh, Emily Kaiser, she is our communications person who handles um, um, outreach and, and getting out uh, advisories and, and whatnot to many, many other tasks, of course. Chad McCollum is the engineer, the official engineer on the project. He, he and his team at Bergman Associates are developing the plans uh, for bidding purposes, and that's being paid for um, by the township uh, via previous agreement from a few years ago. I've been working for the Washington County Road Commission for almost 20 years now. Uh, I've been doing design work for, give or take, 15 years. So uh, I, I, I love these types of projects. I find them challenging, uh, exciting, rewarding. I do think there's a need for something out there, uh, as, the, as does the township board. So I think it's going to be a, a good improvement, a good project. Before I go any further, can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Loud and clear. So we're all good. All right. I don't need any devices tonight. OK. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is we're going to, I got a short uh, slideshow presentation that Chad and I are going to pass the baton on. The, you know, to give some facts, information on it. Uh, at the conclusion of that, I'll open it up for any of the board members as well as members from the audience to ask questions. And we will stick around after that because it's my understanding we're it. We are the meeting tonight. Uh, so you know, we can answer any questions if there are any after, after the presentation slash public meeting. And um, Matt is going to pass around a sign-in sheet and a handout. This will provide you, if you sign it, updates, your email address. It will provide you updates on the project as it's moving forward. So if you want to be kept in on the loop and not through the grapevine, <laughs> on the gossip end, uh, I encourage you to sign that. And Emily will take care of it from there to uh, provide you updates, not only before the project, but after the project is bid. And we're in construction. And one of the things I can tell you about construction is it is a dynamic process. We have a plan. We try to do the best we can to stick to the plan. But Murphy's always seems to show up with his laws, and we have to deviate here and there. And so we like to keep the public informed on sometimes there's some changes to the plan. So, with that said, any questions from the board? Okay. I will go ahead and get started. So, Emily, go ahead. And so, project overview. Uh, we're Essentially, as many of you know, I'd say about 75% of the two miles, that being Chubb Road from uh, Five Mile to Six Mile, and a Five Mile Road from Chubb to Napier, <coughs> is gravel, with uh, the portion from um, the, the, the oh, I, I always want to say waste management, is not waste management, advanced disposal, is from their entrance, eastbound to Napier Road is an old and tired pavement. It is very cracked. It's, it's, it's in need of new life. 
So for the most part, we're going to re we're, we're going to rebuild and we're going to pave this uh, two miles of road. There are two what I would call significant culverts in this two mile portion, which service the uh, Salem and Plymouth County drain. Uh, we have secured permits for those drains, so we uh, are we're, we're good to go on that. But that's going to be part of the scope of work. Also, part of the scope of the work will be the existing CSX railroad crossing on Chug Road. That will be uh, upgraded. It's my understanding that the, the, the flashing lights that are there now, the original from either the 50s or the 60s. 52. Long time. That's, that's, they had a good run. <laughs> and with the uh, increase of traffic, uh, the road commission and the township were able to uh, secure a grant from the Michigan Department of Transportation to cover 50% of those costs, where the remaining costs will be borne by the project. Um, and, and, and I'm not 100% certain how that's going to work out in tax <coughs> special assessment roles, but that, that will be incorporated into the project. So that is the, the major scope of work for Emily, next slide. Mark, yeah. can I ask you a quick question? Please, sir. Uh, the culverts that are being replaced, are, are one of those uh, near Five Mile and uh, Chubb that was worked on several years ago as part of a road improvement project on Chubb when new gravel was put in a few years ago? I don't know the answer to that question. I don't think so. Um, oh, okay, Five Mile Road. Is that a new, are you, are you, are you referring to the one on Five potentially? I don't know what the, our operations department has or has not done um, in the last, say, five years. Do you know it's on yeah. five or is it on Chubb? Uh, uh, I believe it's on Chubb. Chubb. It's on Chubb near Chubb. five. The, 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 the Chubb Road culvert, it, it's not even technically a culvert, it's technically a storm sewer. Uh, it's pretty old and out. It's, it's not new. I was wondering if the one on Five Mile Road expanding the drain was potentially mm -hmm. new. But, um, I don't think so either. I think the answer is specifically to the ones I had in mind, no. Where exactly are these culverts located if you know off the top of your head? It, it, it's at the, the low point on, on Chubb Road, mm -hmm. um, where uh, I would say quarter mile, give or take, from s north of Five Mile Road. And then it crosses diagonally, and it goes into the wetland flat area on Five Mile Road. So that's where the two crossings would be. Thank you. No problem. So, why are we doing this? Why are we here? Well, I think y'all, it's, it's been well documented that there is, you know, this is a commercial corridor. And with commercial industrial areas, there is truck traffic. And with truck traffic and gravel, there's dust and lots of dust. And especially in the summer months and in the winter months or after a rain, it's wet and it's muddy, and neither is frankly great um, for a variety of reasons. So it, it because, you know, the, the zoning, the type of use that's going on in that roadway isn't going to be changing, I mean, it's in, frankly probably a good spot for the township, um, it just makes sense to go ahead and even without the history at the at, at <coughs> getting involved, it, it makes sense for this type of a project to move forward, it's just for those reasons because it fits the, the, the nature of the area from my perspective it does. So tentative timeline for now. So right now there's uh, February to March is what we're going to be focusing on tree removal along the two corridors where trees need to be removed. It's going to be in the neighborhood of about 300 give or take. And why February, March? Because the United States Fish and Wildlife Service requires uh, that the trees be removed prior to bats coming into town, so to speak, and habitating in, in those trees. And there is a fungus that they're fighting, that the, the bats are, on their nose. And they don't want to, the, the thought process behind it is, hey, let's give them a chance, the best chance for survival. With, uh, during breeding season so that uh, their numbers stay healthy. So <coughs> the reason is, you know, let's not cut their tree, let's not cut their homes down when they're breeding and while they're while the babies are pups. I think that's what they call pups. Um, so that's why we have restrictions as far as we have to have those trees removed uh, by uh, March, the end of March, March 31st. 
between about March uh, and June is when utility work will occur. It is still to be determined any type of, of uh, conflicts that exist out there. What's a conflict? So conflict would definitely would be any type of aerial pole, uh, cabinet, or underground line that would be in conflict with elevations, uh, ditching, piping, that kind of stuff. Right now it's looking pretty limited. I don't foresee a huge amount of work. It seems to me right now that Detroit Edison uh, Electric has got the most to do with poles being in certain spots needing to be just put a new pole in and then tying, tying the, the electrical wires from the old pole to the new one. That's pretty standard operating procedure for them. That's not a big deal. But what we do need to do is have that work done uh, prior to the, a, a prime contractor coming in and doing the work. So that's the window we're going to provide them. Then from, say, I, I, haven't, I don't know a specific date yet. I mean, maybe it makes sense to start when school is out for the summer. Um, so from that date, and then probably to Halloween, give or take, is when the road work would start. Um, that would be uh, publicly bid through, our, through the Washtenaw County Road Commission, competitive bid, um, where for, for the most part, most of the work we, we were going to want to have what we call MDOT pre-qualified contractor doing the work. Asphalt, concrete, storm pipes, that kind of stuff. Because we don't want someone who doesn't have <coughs> certifications and expertise doing some work that's going to have a high price tag on the job, done shoddy, done wrong, and then you know, we're all sitting around and scratching our heads like that wasn't a very good idea. <coughs> Other types of scopes of work as part of the project, for instance, tree work. That is one of those things where it's, it's not as critical for that, for that company to be MDOT qualified. So I've heard rumblings that there may be some individuals in the township who have interest in doing that work. Uh, you know, as you know, representative of the road commission on behalf of the township, I have no problem, say, with tree cutting, you know, if they're not MDOT pre-qualified, as long as they can, you know, meet the, any type of specifications we agree upon to, to do that. They would just need to be competitive bid, and if they come out the winner, great, we all win. So that would be my only suggestion to the board is how we, we, we do that so it doesn't look like there's any type of uh, uh, un, uneven playing fields going on there. Before I go any further, are there any questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? Before you, I'll take, I can take a few. Ed, go ahead. When, when do you expect to go out to the <laughs> It's a very good question. Um, in between this, and that should, it's a good question then. Back in the question. Kurt Brochet, raise your hand. Kurt. Okay, the question was, when is the project going to go to bid? And for, for, for contractors to submit bids. And Kurt has the task right now of going on the project, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, that's fine, to uh, acquire right of way in certain limited areas of the project. We need those limited areas in order to go to bid. So in the perfect world, I'd like to say April, May, we will go to bid. Um, and I think that's realistic based on uh, what I'm hearing. But you know, we'll, we'll see how that process pans out. Ma'am, I saw a hand look back. I'm just curious um, how the two mile stretch was chosen and if the golf course had any effect on it and if the homeowners along this two mile stretch are impacted in any way with cost. Sure. I, 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 the question was, is how was the two miles chosen and what impacts is this going to have with the property owners along, along the corridor? So and did the golf course have any, any um, skin in the game? Any game, <laughs> yeah. you know, in it being chosen? Uh, ultimately, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, Dale, the township you know, said these are the roads we want done. And we said, no problem, <coughs> we can take care of that. So that, in a nutshell, is how the two corridors, the two miles, mile each, <coughs> two, was chosen. The township is also running the special assessment district for that project. I am not yet intimately familiar with all the details. I'm still acquiring all that information. Um, but it, it is my understanding that, you know, per laws, and Ed can also answer that question potentially too as, as the township attorney, the uh, state laws with special assessment district, because that's how a portion of this is being funded, because the township is contributing $1.3 million at the last board resolution, uh, that anyone that receives a benefit for that project has to pay an assessment. 
And when you are inside of those project limits, you are receiving a benefit. And that would include, I believe it's called Brayburn Golf Course. So. And the homeowners in that. And the homeowners. How that gets worked out as far as percentages, I, I'd have to defer that to, to Ed and the Township and Legal Council and, and the Township Board. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's move on to the next slide because there'll be more opportunities to ask questions and get answers. Um, this is where I hand the baton off to the project engineer, Chad Bergman, and he'll take it from here and then I'll finish it up in the end. Thanks, Mark. So just some details on the project. Um, as Mark said, we're going to reconstruct both of the one-mile segments of the roadway. Uh, the existing gravel surface is 24, 26 feet wide uh, right now. And we'll be paving 11-foot lanes and 4-foot paved shoulders and also having a 2-foot aggregate shoulder. So we'll be increasing the width of the road uh, 6 or 8 feet <coughs> in total. Um, the, it's going to be a, 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 an asphalt surface with new um, aggregate base underneath that and uh, it'll for the most part be built on top of the existing uh, material that's out there. Uh, as part of that, Mark mentioned we're doing the, the larger culverts, um, we're also doing some other drainage upgrades, uh, be putting in some curb and gutter to help control the flow of the water in certain areas. The, the culvert we're replacing, Mark mentioned, we're also lengthening due to the road widening. Uh, some driveway culverts uh, lengthened or, or replaced and installed, and reestablishing the existing ditching to control where the water is going to. Uh, that's really important. So, one of the major parts of the job is some profile adjustments or, or where the hills and the, the low areas are at. And there's, on each roadway, there's an area where we're cutting uh, one of the hills and we're filling in one of the, in the low areas. Uh, to increase the sight distance for the traveling folks, as well as in the low spots, get the, the subgrade up uh, above where the water's at, because in those low areas, their wetlands, the water table is relatively high. So uh, in an effort to get that up, to help increase the longevity of the road, and, and increase the sight distance on the hills, there's some pretty significant uh, modifications. Uh, on Chubb Road, I think we may be upwards of five feet on the one hill cut. Uh, so we're knocking the high, the high point of that hill down uh, five feet. Uh, on five mile, the it's uh, two and a half feet hill cut. And then in the low areas, we're filling about two feet, two and a half feet, bringing that surface up. As Mark mentioned, there's going to be some tree removals uh, due to the road widening, <coughs> the shoulders, the new ditching, uh, and, and the profile adjustments. We have to grade out the right of way, and there's going to be trees that are impacted, uh, creating clear zone area for cars that <coughs> may leave the travel way, uh, creating a safer area. And as Mark mentioned, it has to be done in the March. In the low areas, I mentioned where the wetlands are at, raising that up, we're going to be filling in a little bit of those wetlands. Um, in total, we have about 0.35 acres, which is not a massive amount, but that will be mitigated and off the uh, wetland bank. So whatever we impact, we'll be mitigating somewhere else, creating new wetlands. Does the DEQ determine where that offsite would be? We have determined the site and they have approved of it there there's multiple sites um, it has to generally be in the same uh, watershed the same uh, wetland area we do have an approved site I think from my from my recollection Chad I believe we only had really one site to choose from that there are parameters for us to purchase credits it did I, at this if, point because at first there were uh, a couple we were led to believe were uh, options for us to pursue and as 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 uh, one of chad's teammates uh at bergman uh, staff members looked into it it turned out it was not the case they're not quite ready to be right they're not open to business yet so to speak yeah. 
So it, it turned out we only really had, there was only one game in town in order for us to uh, be able to purchase the credits in order for us to, in, in return, get the permit to do the work. Did we get any pricing on that yet? Are we still? We have not gotten all the details yet on that. Uh, I do recall sending you what we believe to be the preliminary. Was it in the realm of 50? Uh, 40, between 40 and 50. Yeah, yeah that, that's, and, and I can, I work on a, I'm personally managing a project now in Pittsfield Township and uh, on uh, Textile Road between State Road and Michigan Avenue. We also had wetland mitigation on that project, and the numbers were close, in meaning in numbers in, in, involved. Actually, yeah, they were they're relatively close, and I can sh tell you that the, the figures that we've been given, as far as an estimate for the credits, are very close and similar to what I'm experiencing and, and what we ended up paying on Textile Road. So by no means do I think that the township is getting a raw deal, so to speak, uh, on, on uh, purchasing these credits. I, I, I think it's, it's a fair and, and warranted price from what I get, from what I'm understanding. Yeah. We're looking into ways to try to bring that back. Right. <clears throat> Chad, one of the screens that you had on there was the description of most of the road. It's I think it's, it said an eight inch aggregate base. Mm -hmm. Is that considered what you call a class A road? Is that the is that what we we're building down there? Or? This will be an all season roadway when it's done. So what does all season roadway mean? In Michigan, we have, and Matt, help me out here if I speak, because Matt ran permits for 10 years. I am now running permits, but uh, Matt is the master of this. In, in Michigan, there are, the county highway engineer has the ability, per state law, to restrict certain lengths and, and widths and weights of trucks, oversized and overweight trucks, during uh, the thaw season. And that's to protect our roadways, okay? So they have to run shorter trucks, less weight, you know, lighter trucks during that period whenever the county highway engineer deems it is necessary to do so. That typically happens in March. Sometimes it's February, sometimes it goes into April. But when the roadway is an all-season roadway, uh, that, does not, that restriction doesn't apply. And the, the, the trucks can run uh, uh, the, the weights, the legal weights uh, and the lengths that they can say in June or July. That's still challenging to them because at some point they got to go off to Six Mile Road or Rossonville Road, which may not be an off-season roadway. But nonetheless, what we're building on Five and and uh, Rossonville, excuse me, Five Mile and Chubb Road will be an off-season roadway. So seasonal weight restrictions will not apply. A follow-up question, I guess, would be: Michigan has had their problems of cracked roads over the years. Would it be cost more cost effective to put say a ten or a twelve inch base, pay a little bit more, let it last longer, or just go with the standard? No. Part of the issue you run into is you just increase the weight. So in those lower areas where it's wetlands and you have trouble building a deep section that's going to not really settle, uh, more thickness of pavements, more weight, you, know, you start getting into a settling issue uh, potentially. Mm -hmm. And that, that turns into undercuts, a lot of expensive construction. We had a, a, our geotech consultant ran the traffic numbers in uh, the payment section. And this is for the truck traffic that we have. This is what everyone agreed on. Okay. So it would be acceptable. Dell, I'll, I'll add on to that. Um, one of the things that, that I, when I run, a, I, I also in the past have run special assessment projects for neighborhoods and communities. So in those types of circumstances, the neighborhood comes to us and says, hey, we'd like to assess ourselves to get a brand new roadway. And one of the things, you know, I share with them is that it is asphalt and in time it will crack. But that doesn't mean it's a failure and that does not mean it's, it's, it's a bad roadway. It's just... One of the elements that, um, for the lack of a better word, works against asphalt is a process called oxidation. And that is nothing more than a chemical reaction that occurs with the oxygen in the air uh, and intermixing with the, the particles, the chemicals within the pavement. 
I don't know if you put, not, some of you may have noticed this. The first day you put asphalt down, it is pitch black. And then, and then within three months, it starts turning gray. Why is that? That's the process of oxidation. And over the course of time, think of it as, um, because it's flexible, uh, that it, 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 it dries out and it becomes more brittle and it starts cracking. The first plot you're right, you're going to see a crack is right down the center of the roadway. And that's not a failure, that's called a, a, a cold joint. So they, they, they put the asphalt down in one lane at a time. So they have this physical cold, cold joint at the, at the, in this case, at the crown of the roadway. And over time, that starts to crack and get a little bit separated. And there's mechanisms with crack sealing in order to be able to seal that because one of the detriments to a roadway, the, the number one detriment, I would argue, is water. Getting into it, going underneath, free saw, this time of year, working up, and you get the pothole effect. So, and in time, there will also be transverse cracking. And I don't know the, the nature of the, the, how people are going to pay back over the course of time. A lot of times it's a 10-year special assessment district. I assure you, I promise you, the pavement will crack in, <laughs> within those 10 years. But that does not mean it's a failure. But I think it's important that you understand that so that moving forward, you see certain things that you're like, oh boy, what happened here? Why is this pavement happening this way? So I, I just like to set you know, the, the, those parameters are one understands exactly what's what's to come. So. Can you share with us to, uh, from your engineering expertise, what types of uh, uh, preventive maintenance costs we should anticipate going forward to ensure the integrity of the road so it, it doesn't deteriorate uh, prematurely? This is a good, good question. So the question asked was, what type of preventive maintenance aspects, mechanisms are out there to protect the asset. Um, the, the first line of defense is crack sealing. That is in the realm of, I would say, five to $6,000 per mile. So let's just roughly say $15,000 in today's dollars to do two miles of roadway. Um, after that, the next line of defense is what we call chip sealing. And you've probably seen it out on, not right now, because six miles new in front of us, but um, where uh, essentially, uh, uh, a, a type of emulsion is placed on uh, the pavement. I like to call it sunblock because it helps seal the cracks, but also helps the process of re retarding the process of oxidation. And then they put the chips right on top of it. The primary goal of the, the chips, although it does have secondary benefits, is so you can ride on it immediately because otherwise it would take a long time for that to cure and you have to keep traffic off it. I'm going to say that is going to be in the realm of $50,000 per mile. Do you think that's too high, Matt? How much? 25 to 30. There you go. So 50 for the whole project. And we would anticipate that might have to happen year five, or does it just depend on the volume of traffic, the weight, et cetera, weather conditions? Yes. Science has shown that if you do it on year one, you get the most bang for your buck, believe it or not. And that can be counterintuitive to some people saying, my goodness, we just did this road last year. Why are you putting this money into it? And they've, they've been able to find that that road is going to last longer if you do it on year one. Historically, that's not how the Washington County Road Commission has done it. We just started doing that this year, I believe, on certain road segments. Um, so it's five to seven years is a, is a is historically what we've been doing, with the crack ceiling being done around year three. Okay. Is that uh, chip and tar going to be like what was put on the last couple of years on North Territorial between Godfordson and Curtis? They say yes. Because I don't that, that, that emulsion they put out is not, I've seen real chip and tar, and that didn't have much adhesion to it. And that chip was gone awfully quick. Sometimes yeah. you have the right adhesive; it sticks. Sometimes there's an issue with what we call bleeding, where the traffic overworks it, and then the emulsion goes through. So it looks like the rocks are gone, but really they're there. So that potentially may—I don't know enough history. I'm, I'm just kind yeah, of speaking. Was, it wasn't a very good job the last couple yeah. of years on North Territory on that chip and seal. I can't speak to it because I don't—I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. How, why don't you take that one, and then we can move on. Um, you, you mentioned you had a traffic assessment. 
after the road is paved, won't the traffic increase significantly? And is that taken into consideration? We didn't we did do a traffic analysis. We, we did the geotechnical analysis based on the amount of traffic. We estimate future traffic volumes that we use. Uh, so we do try to come up with a number of future vehicles that will use the road that the pavement design is based on. In some circumstances, I agree with echoing Chad, I agree. Sometimes, let's just say uh, my project in Bitsville Township Textile Road, uh, if you build it, they will come. Yeah, and people are gonna, the, the volumes are gonna go up through that, that segment of roadway between Michigan Avenue and State Road, if you're familiar with that area. Uh, because there's pavement to the east and there's pavement to the west. In this case, it's a destination oriented that's already being used today. So I personally do not project any type of significant increase in traffic, um, even on Five Mile Road. I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but it, it's still gravel when you get to Chubb Road. It's not like it's taking you, um, providing you an alternative paved option for so many miles where now people are gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna take this road instead. And, now, and that's where the volume is usually starting to increase. So I don't personally project that to occur. <coughs> You don't mind, Mark, I've got a yeah. quick question. Just why asphalt <clears throat> over concrete? With the impact of the road, would concrete not be a better pavement because of the trucking uh, cost factor? Or just, uh, it, it's, go ahead, Jeff. Well, I was just gonna say, we did do a cost comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, the concrete is more expensive. I guess my question, lifespan between the asphalt and the concrete, would the concrete not outlast it before needing repair because of the impact of that road? My personal take, mm -hmm. it's going to be comparable. Here's why I say that. In years past, I mean, we go back to Roman times, that far back, you know, things are still standing from the concrete that we have that's, that was put there. The problem that we have in Michigan for the concrete industry is the really high quality materials and they're mined out and they're not readily available. So I am of the opinion that, you know, we're gonna, we, we definitely took that into consideration. In fact, we, we considered uh, an option called roller compacted concrete, which is kind of a hybrid concrete. I, I was led on to believe by the industry that certain things were gonna go great and then from a logistical standpoint, when we started getting down the road, it didn't turn out to be so rosy after all to the point where it made sense for this to happen at all. Um, so like Chad said, cost more and long term, historically, yeah, concrete definitely would have been hands down the right option. In today's market with the, with the materials, I think it's comparable. I don't think you're gonna lose either direction. I'll just add to that, certainly there are a lot of great contractors on either side. In Washington County, um, we're very competitive when it comes to HMA. Okay. Um, asphalt is one, we've got two great producers in very close proximity to Washington County. And so there's definitely economies of scale for HMA. Um, but both were looked at, I looked at it with Mark and, and Chad together. Um, certainly HMA ended up um, being from a life cycle cost standpoint. Um, the less expensive option, and still get your top performance for pavement. Okay, so thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Good question. Could any of you gentlemen tell me what you what the concrete that you use now has, or we now have as right away by width? <coughs> on this road? I know we have the two miles, but how wide is it? Because you said you are going to make a bigger road there. I wanted to know if you're... It's 66 feet. Okay, so General. we don't have to go in and get anybody's front lawn and say we're going to use that up. We'll be doing a little bit of grading uh, based on the profile changes. <laughs> Um, driveway. But work. you already you already have that right away there. You don't have to say we're in we're in somebody's yard now and we have to. Over, you already have the right away to do all that stuff. So you don't have to. So, in a nutshell, the answer is it depends on where you're located along the project. As Chad indicated, we're doing some cuts. We're doing some fills. Yeah. And when you do a cut, we have to chase further. Uh, laterally from the center line of the roadway and sometimes that goes outside of the road right away to the point where we call we need a grading temporary grading permit from the property owner 
What that does, and, and Kurt will explain that to anyone that falls into that situation uh, within the project limits, is that provides the contractor the ability to grade the land as needed for like mowing, drainage, whatever it takes in order for us to do the right job. You still own the land. You still, it, it reverts back to you when it's done. It is not a take, so to speak. There are corners at the intersections of of uh, six mile and five mile and Napier and five mile where we are going to have to have little sliver corner cuts from the property owners in order for us to achieve the geometrics of the intersections to to work properly so other, other than that we're talking about what we call temporary grading permits okay because the subject did come up a couple months ago that you would have to have a thing, uh, purchase some of this land to get the road wide enough to go through there. And, and we, right, and I, and I shared that with Gary and Dale, because at that time we didn't have enough information, and frankly I wanted to be very conservative and paint a broad picture. We, we just didn't know at that time, and I, I, I didn't want to paint something so rosy and then all of a sudden like, hey, guess what, we, it's not that rosy. So that is why I, I, I spun it, said it that way. Okay, I just wanted to know. I Great question. Know. Can we move along, in the, can we hold the questions finish it up and then we'll open it back up. Mark, do you just want to let everybody know that I will be meeting with each of the individual property owners and residents to go over the project more specifically <coughs> how it impacts your property. Kurt, who are you? Never Kurt heard. Roche with Right Boy. Sorry, Mark missed me on the first go around, but I went to Washington to see He's with the Road Commission. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go back to where we were. So this is just a graphic showing where the wetland impacts are that I mentioned before. Um, all in the sag areas, the low areas of, of each roadway. Um, you can see th those are all within the existing right of way. It's just that we are filling in a wetland, so we'll be mitigating all of that off site. So during construction, the maintenance of traffic or traffic control, uh, the plan on Chubb Road will be to close it off to most traffic. It'll be open to local traffic, residents that live on the road. We'll be, we'll be closing the southbound portion of the roadway, constructing that and maintaining traffic on the northbound side. And then once the southbound side is paved, we'll be putting the northbound traffic on the newly constructed road and reconstructing the second lane. Um, Jay, you want to tell them why we're doing it, why the contractor's gonna phase it that way? <coughs> <clears throat> why, so for the audience that doesn't know our, our, our business, why are they phasing it in two different phases for Chubb Road, meaning one side and then the other side? Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to set you up. What I wanted to just express, you know, people ask why can't we do the project all at once? Why can't we just, why can't the contractor just build the roadway? <coughs> because with the amount of cuts and the amount of fields, no problem, I wasn't very clear. The amount of cuts and the amount of fills that are there, it provides an access problem. And because there's, you know, the trucking companies, the, the business quarters, I mean, business can't stop for them. We need to keep providing access to them. So that's why we're we're breaking Chubb Road into two segments uh, for each side, and then we'll switch traffic onto onto one side and then the other while they flip the, the work onto the other side. So sorry, Chad, I just that's all right. Sorry, I just thought I I wasn't very clear, so my apologies. So on five mile, there's, uh, I don't believe there's any residential properties on five mile, uh, the landfill and golf course. So that's going to be full closure and uh, with the detour allowing traffic to the golf course. Within the uh, advanced disposal property, there's some driveways and existing roads. They'll be using those uh, to access Napier Road, uh, so they won't need access to five mile. That will speed up the, the construction on five mile, uh, not having to have traffic on there. So. And we've worked that agreement out with, with advanced disposal. They, they signed off on that. And the golf course will be gaining access via uh, near the intersection of five and Napier. I, I got a quick question on the advanced disposal. The mailbox is sitting there at the end of our driveway. And your flyer, you talked about how you set them at the end of the construction project. Is that something we have to get from the post office, or you guys get from the post office? How's that done? Our contractor takes care of all that for you. You do not yes. need to get okay. them all. We will notify you as to where 
and this applies to anyone, not just advanced disposal. Anytime the, the, if you have a mailbox in the project limits and it gets relocated by the contractor, we'll work with you, but they, they like to put the mail company, U.S. Mail Service, likes them outside of the roadway so they don't get in the mud and the muck and get stuck and all that. So that makes sense. So, and then once we're done, the contractor has to move them all back to where they were. So, okay, just sure. Oh, no problem. So as I mentioned, the detours that, that'll be used during construction, um, the detour for a five mile road uh, will, so I guess stepping back a, a minute, the Chubb Road will be constructed first and then five mile will be constructed after that. So that Chubb Road can be used as part of the detour for five mile. Uh, so Chubb Road to six mile to Napier will allow everyone to get around the five mile construction. And for the, during the Chubb Road, uh, the detour will be six mile to Napier to five mile, however you want to get from that intersection. So, <coughs> come back to Mark. me. All right, we're going to finish this up. Thank you, Chad. So where are we going from here? So as I said, Kurt is in the back there. He's going to be approaching people, maybe as soon as tomorrow. <laughs> knocking on doors, making phone calls. He need to introduce himself as to, to the individuals that uh, we need something before we go to bid on. One of the things I'm going to need, me as project manager for Washington High Road Commission on your behalf, is because we need to cut those trees down between March 31st, is at your next board meeting, then back up. We're not going to be able to bid the, a lot of times we like to have the tree removal process as part of the overall contract. That's, that's how we prefer to do it. Um, but in this case, timing wise, that's not going to work itself out. So in order to meet that timeline for U.S. Fish and Wildlife, we're going to need to separate the two tasks <laughs> out under two different contracts. We need one for, road, for tree removal and then the other one for all the other items that are necessary to build the roadway so that we, we're, we're not in, in conflict. I will, you know, work out the details with Gary, but I will need from this board to pass a resolution authorizing Gary, and obviously he'll, I assume, presume he'll you know, probably, you know, keep you guys in the loop, on the February meeting, authorizing the Road Commission to, to uh, release that contract, bid that, allow that contract to go through. A bid price, I'm guessing in the realm right now, based on what I'm seeing on my textile road project, I'm going to say give or take 50 low end, 70,000 high end. I'm going to say it's somewhere in that realm. Um, I don't see it being a hindrance, a disadvantage to separating the two, uh, because it's it, it's it's not a, it's not affecting like any time of economies of scale uh, for where you know, this this one contract is going to just do this work. He's not going to be doing other work. Therefore, he has to mobilize twice. So I don't I don't see you guys losing out and paying extra per se uh, for separating the two contracts out. I said, Kurt, with the right of way, uh, we talked about the consent to grade outside of the roadway. That's the temporary grading easements where you still own, as a property owner, you still retain the rights to that land. It just gives the contractor the ability to work on it. Um, uh, and then the consent to uh, remove select trees outside of the right of way, that's something else, Kurt. There's a handful of those that we need to work with property owners prior to uh, us uh, for this first contract and moving them out. And like I said, at the corners, of the three major intersections, permanent easements that we're going to be needed to build the geometrics of the intersection. Next Can you slide. explain why you have to remove trees out of the right of way? Why would we have to remove, remove a tree that's out of the road? So the question is, is, why would we have to remove a tree outside of the right of way? Well, the good news is there's not many. And the answer is, like I explained to the lady in back, is that when you have uh, significant cuts, significant fills, we have to chase laterally further outside of the road right of way potentially for that grading area. And when you start putting topsoil or you're cutting topsoil into the roots of that tree, it's going to die. It's not going to make it. So that's when we work with the property and said, sorry, you know, we, we worked around this. If we can, we listen. Not, not we can. We always listen to the property owner. And if there's a reasonable solution to counter that, we always take it into consideration. Because we understand that there's certain circumstances like, Gosh, I'm minding my grandfather planted that tree and I really like to keep it. It's, you know, sometimes we have tricks that we can work out. And work out. Other times we, we have no solutions. Um, but you know, by all means, Kurt will definitely relay that information to Chad and I, and we will listen to that. And, and so that in a nutshell is why sometimes trees outside of the road right away have to be removed. 
And not necessarily every tree in the road right away is coming out either. Cutting a tree costs money. And if it's not necessary to cut the tree, we're not going to cut the tree just because to cut it. So, um, you know, so yes, many of the trees in the right of way are coming out, but not specifically every single one of them, just for no good reason. <clears throat> Let me uh, finish this up, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get right back to you later. Sure. Thanks. So you know, are we already talked about this. Spring for utility relocations, road work, bid April, May, uh, railroad April, May. And construction, keep our fingers crossed, begins in June. Is there anything else, Emily? If you have questions, um, I have business cards. Uh, that's my number. That's my direct line. You will not get chased around. That is my email address. I'll go right to that laptop that Emily's working on. And all that information is on the handout that we pass out at the start, and the first page is Mark's contact information. Yeah. And if it's right away specific, I'm going to relay everything to Kurt. Kurt knows the laws with right away. I know. I know a little bit of it, but he's the expert. That's why we keep him on. That's why he's the expert in the right away. Anything that specific, but he works with me. So if there's an engineering question pertaining to the right away, we work in tandem and we, we resolve it and we figure each other out. But other than that, like if you have questions about timing, you have, I, I, here's an example I hear a lot. I have a wedding that's going to happen at my house and it's going to be in June and this is going to be a disaster. What can you do for me? I've had that happen five times probably in the course of my 15 years. We always work it out. <clears throat> is it going to be ideal? No. Sometimes I even have the luxury of saying, guys, you're not working this day because of this wedding. You know, that's the type of, I can try to put, if I know things up front before the contract goes to bid, I have abilities to work around that. But if you tell me after the project's <coughs> bid, then I'm, I'm, my hands are a little bit tied to some degree. Short of the, the, the uh, gracious of the contractor, uh, if, if they're allowed such thing to happen. So. I have nothing else. Reggie, I'm going to get to Reggie, Just, and then I'll, yeah. then I'll open it up. So what, what can I answer for you, Reggie? I think on one of the first or second slides, you, I think I've seen upwards of 300 trees being removed. Yes, sir. Is there any allowance for replacing trees, uh, replantings, or a long job road, five mile? That is not built into the project cost. Okay. But, you know, being that this is a unique project, that the board is running it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and painting, Clearly, that's that's something that can be done, um, and that's something we can discuss if that's you know if, if that's a desire the township to <coughs> go. Matt, what do you? What yeah, do you just one thing on the tree removals. Um, as Mark mentioned, the number one enemy of pavement is water, and so you got to have good drainage. Sure. And sometimes um, when you do tree planting, you get either <coughs> I don't know how much area really realistically there is because we've got a lot of open drainage. We want to make sure that water gets away from the pavement, protects that investment. We talked about life cycle costs. If we if we don't get rid of, rid of and manage the stormwater runoff, then that's going to affect the life cycle cost of the overall pavement design. So that's one of the reasons why there is significant tree removals because we need to have good drainage facilities. And um, so it's 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 a difficult task and it's very limited real estate. So only that's an option if there's other township properties as far as um, and that gets into a project cost, and that's really a decision the township would, would be um, something that certainly you can consider. Okay, so is, if you need to encroach into somebody's area and take out a tree, is there an allowance or some kind of funds to re if that homeowner requests a new tree to be replanted? Yeah, there's there's certain compensation okay. that we have to go through our right of <coughs> acquisition so process. So determined. Yeah, so Kurt will work with that property owner. If, if the tree is indeed outside the right of way and we're impacting it, we're requesting it to be removed as part of the project, there's a compensation part of that. So, makes sense. so okay. sometimes yeah. we get a property owner that says, please get right. rid of that tree. I hate it. And believe it or not, they're like, fine, I don't even want it. Just make it go away. That's, sure. that's a cost to me. Make it go away. I'm happy. Here, no more I sign it. And other times when people, like I said, that you know that it's very <laughs> symbolic, it's very emotional to the tree. For whatever reason, we all have our emotional attachments. So. Could these details work themselves out? Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, and we can, you know, Kurt's going to find out in the next weeks to come, you know, what circumstances we run into. And of course, I'll be keeping Gary uh, informed. Um, and he, he will pass that information along to the rest of the township board and the well center needs to be uh, informed of that decision. So, thank you. You're welcome. So, so I thought you said you, you only needed 15 or 20 minutes. I like it. <laughs> no, thanks, Mark. Thanks. Any other questions from the audience? Which one's Kurt? 
Kurt is the gentleman in the back there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, he all oh, knows asking who I was. I will be, if you're a resident along uh, Chubb Road or Five Mile. No, I'm going to the top of the hill. The top of the hill? Where are you going to have cut it down? Yes. We'll okay. talk afterwards. We'll show you the plans and we'll the walk east, you through it. Oh, I'm sorry, on the west side of the road? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions from the audience? I can yes, sir. Yes, uh, regarding the uh, maintenance and upkeep of the road, is that totally the responsibility of the road commission? As far as setting what kind of restrictions you may have and upkeep, whose responsibility is it totally <coughs> the road commission? I'm going to pass that to Matt, if you don't mind. To, I mean, I, I can take it. Sure. Hey, these are You're a director, so I'll let Matt. I believe these that. are primary roadways. And certainly we're always working in partnership with our townships on selecting preventive maintenance but ultimately with them being primary designated routes the the, the maintenance is, is our responsibility i think they're locals man are they locals i believe they're both okay. locals so locals that changes the dynamics a little bit then we're always working with our partners in the township but if you have some repair to do we're uh, talking about cracks down the middle of the road and so forth is that something that the road commission would do and pay for as well? Again, if it's local roads, and, and my mistake, my, my apologies. Um, if they're local roads, ultimately, um, we are we are in partnership with that. We certainly um, every year we get together and, and go through uh, what are our priorities as far as preventive maintenance or significant projects on the local road system. But by law, um, there. there if, if it's you're doing a significant above normal maintenance on, on a local road, you have to have 50 percent participation from from uh, the townships. So we, we, we work that out. Just one, question. Question. one last question. Sure. Uh, as far as the let's say the restriction of mud on the roads, and we see some of that here from the trucks and all. Is there any kind of restriction on that that says hey? You can't be torn mud Yeah, over. so certainly we, we get those complaints as does the township, and we work with the individual property owners on solutions. Um, tracking mud on the roadway is definitely not a, uh, an acceptable uh, condition, so we, we attempt to work with the property owners um, to resolve their issues on site. It's a symptom of a problem that's occurring on site, so whether it be um, mud, mud mats or tire wash that, that gets um, put on the property owner to take care of, but it's really up to them. A lot of times they'll, they'll assist with <coughs> sweeping and the sweeping of the roadway as well. So, yep, good question. Just as a clarifier, you do monitor the road maintenance and make Oh, absolutely, yes. So we don't have to ourselves no, no, call no, you up and say, yeah, it's a partnership. Yeah, and, and routine maintenance, like snow plowing, that kind of thing, that's all on, that's all on us. Yep. So you don't have to plow yourself. Pothole patching, signs go down. Yes, that's all, that's yeah. all considered routine maintenance. So. Yeah. Preventative maintenance, like chip seals and crack seals, will go the above normal maintenance. Who will be working as a partnership? Matt, due to the uh, anticipated increase of uh, volume, the traffic will be going down there. <clears throat> Is there a way of changing a local road to, to a primary road? That's, a, that's a absolutely a very valid question. There's a process <coughs> that, certainly I can review that with you. Um, MDOT is ultimately the decision maker on um, classification of the roadways. We can certainly make that request. Um, now that they're paved roadways and they're certainly on the mile, that's what kind of in my head. I thought they were they made the same, same they were primary roads. But certainly we can make that request. And then, therefore, that would shift some of that, the, the circumstances. So we okay. can certainly look into that. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. At our last meeting, uh, Mr. Converse stated <coughs> that uh, this would be the primary way people would go instead of by the dump. These guys say that it ain't going to change it that much. They just said it earlier. Well, which way is it going to be? Well, I could ask, answer that very question. You want to? Drive on a nice paved road, or do you want? Well, I'm, to I'm going by I'm going by what you said. <coughs> I'm going down. What I said was the primary the primary way is going down this new road, <coughs> which is going down six mile, which is narrow. There's no lines on it. You can't see the center of the road half the time. The uh, potholes in it through the end down there. 
I certainly wouldn't go down a pothole road when I got a nice brand new road coming down there. And I think you're going to find the majority of the traffic coming down there is from the Lights Trail and right, right up. Because not only that, the, uh, the uh, congestion, <coughs> and I, think Bob, I talked with Bob about this, that intersection between Napier and Five Mile is not a very good intersection. Half the time you can't even see to the east. You can't even pull up there. You can't see trucks coming on cars coming up that road. Which part is it? That's that Napier to Five Mile. That intersection right there in front of the land. You're talking about the Wayne County side? Yes. That is a very dangerous corner. And there has been accidents, nearly accidents, I should say. I don't know how what the Often or not, there's, there's fender benders there. And with this coming back in here, that's a straight shot through. They won't, the local traffic will not be <coughs> going back up and back to get up there and contend with more truck traffic going in and out of the dump and all the railroad tracks and all the other stuff. So to me, if that's the reason of why I'm saying is there's going to be a lot of traffic. Because I'm, I'm going to say, and I clarified this last month, I won't be using Six Mile and Napier when that goes in there. I'm going to be using the other boat. If I may, I think I understood that the time that the, the traffic that would impact six mile would be during the construction because they have to reroute from five mile down Chubb Road to six mile while they're doing the construction on five mile. If I understood you correctly. Right. But, but to increase the traffic on six mile, um, I, I didn't understand it that way. Well, oh. I have one more. Yep. Idea mud on the road, okay? They have had a problem with cable bringing mud on the roads all the time. Who's going to control that now? Is that the county's thing to control with cable? <coughs> the mud on the roads all the time, or is that the township? We, you look at we, the we've talked about that, and the, the road commission has talked about that, and the, uh, <coughs> the uh, idea of having a, a wheel washer put in there so I believe he had three quotes I seen some of them and uh, that needs to be installed on that property and to just solve that bid solution bid? yeah he's got a bid for it yeah so that's what's happening with that so um, any other questions on um, just to sum this up um, we have uh, talked uh, a number of times about the uh, uh, the process that we we take now and Ed maybe can help me out a little bit here so the next process you know if you are new here tonight we have gone through two special uh, district assessment districts that have been passed by the board uh, we've had public hearing on it um, uh, we had one person I believe uh, in protest and writing I'm, I'm not sure it was a property owner is that correct what one property owner. one property owner and uh, so anyway these are the two uh, special um, resolutions on, on five mile and one on Chubb Road and um, and now the next process is which we've been working on with our financial uh, person that is heading this up on bonding for if it's a 10-year or 15-year bond and what the actual cost is going to be um, as you remember, if you're here last month, that the township board uh, put contribute our contribute to this project is 1.3 million dollars, uh, and then um, so once we get them assessment rolls, we can uh, really have a good idea. So then the next process, Mr. Plato, will be uh, next, another public hearing. Another, well, the next month will be the time when the township will actually determine the uh, special assessment for each particular parcel so that's when you'll find out what the assessment will be for your if you live along Chubb or five mile what your assessment's going to be for your parcel um, so the board will have I believe the plan is to have one meeting to have a kind of a preliminary discussion for that at the regular board meeting and then a special meeting um, thereafter just to discuss the uh, special assessments and how that's going to be allocated so one of the important processes I made, you know, as far as the special assessment, only because I, I deal with these on my end as well, is the, the, the key figure that needs to come in right now is the bid for the project, because that's ultimately going to drive your assessment for those that live within the project, that do business or live within the project. And that will determine your, the, the tax roll. 
and that's where they have they call it for the road commission process the hearing of objections uh, no that, excuse me that's not true they call it the confirmation of the role and I don't know if that's the same uh, name that they use for public act 188 but once the township ed uh, has our contract amount that's when they will lock in the the assessment roles and have their hearing per state statute to be able to uh, tell you what what, sure. what what your assessment bill is going to be okay and then uh, but again as far as the traffic flow on that I, I think um, it doesn't take much to figure out if you just analyze to see what happens on a daily basis down there that um, it's not going to make sense for trucks to come out uh, six mile um, up to six mile from Chubb they'll be going in the other direction be really uh, to help the flow so we know that the traffic will be uh, the business traffic down there will be uh, headed uh, to the south to five mile going out that way so it's going to improve um, you know this is has been going on for several years now as far as the dust and the traffic and everything that's been going on down there we did create a truck ordinance um, uh, to help with some of the truck traffic through town and um, um, you know the DEQ was involved because between the road commission and also the township about the issues with the dust problems and everything down there so we really believe that this is going to be a good uh, project for us to handle and to see a problem finally solved and uh, so I myself am excited about it and I believe that uh, will be a route that uh, people will use. Uh, I appreciate some of the comments tonight about maintenance, and um, I have asked our uh, township attorney to look in it to see, as we're doing this financial um, process, I really believe because of the heavy truck traffic and the businesses around there that there should be maybe something, since it is a special assessment district, uh, Mr. Gluka, I believe we've had a conversation about it too that uh, needs to look in that there might be some kind of a assessment or maintenance for these two roads in that corridor because of the businesses and the truck traffic. So um, that's something that uh, Mr. Plato is working on so that we can discuss this in our future meetings as we're moving along. Because it, it, even though it is a Class A road, there's a lot of heavy trucks there. I believe there's going to be more, probably more maintenance than our normal roads that are through here. So we want to make sure that uh, we're not constantly having problems with with that, them roads. Have I missed anything else? Any other comments, boards, members? Yes. I have sir. a question um, about the coordination of this project with the um, eastbound traffic or eastbound new road of five mile i've heard i've heard rumors that they're going to be um rumors, yeah wayne county that yeah. wayne county is going to be that working corridor. on five mile going east correct and right from major road, road huh. there. Yeah, that's why we have these meetings well and that's mainly be uh when that all gets filled out there which uh, i'm sure you've been reading the papers you know five six thousand jobs come into that area between plymouth and northville so that's the future of that whole corridor down there so i will make a phone call to wayne county and find out what's going on so, so. I mean, so there's a transition i think advanced disposal knows more about it because that's who i heard it from so yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> i'll make a phone call to wayne county and find out what's going on yeah that is definitely happening thank you for saying so, that. i did not know that okay uh, road commission thank you for being here tonight we thank appreciate you your presentation much. and um we just have a few other things here on the agenda that we need to go through here to pay some bills and uh, i believe i got one motion here so um by the way we'll stick around after with taxes okay your it still won't take long so um we're down on the agenda under regular public comment anybody at this time yes they're talking about dust control what's happening with cable with their dust control have you guys done anything about that yet it's it's being worked on okay well, hey take it or leave it but that's what they're doing they're working on it so okay anybody else all right all right no other public comment uh so 
One announcement that I do need to make tonight is I don't know if you're aware of, but uh, we have been talking uh, on our last uh, hearings of the Salem Springs, uh, the USD, the Urban Services District. Uh, it was in the papers here uh, before, was it before Christmas or I believe it was before Christmas, uh, that there is another $10 million grant that has been awarded to Salem Township. Uh, we have not been contacted by the state yet, um, but um, it was in the Detroit News uh, online, I believe it was two Fridays ago. Um, so, um, uh, so now that's a $20 million uh, project. Uh, again, just to refresh your memories, this project is $30 million that we are believing that this is what it's going to cost. Um, once again, to not to uh, you know be a repeating uh, broken record, but uh, the township has has, has said that um, this financing of the infrastructure in that area is to be um, you know in the in, in the midst of thirty thousand dollars is to be paid by the developers. Um, we have uh, told them we've met with uh, maybe maybe four or five of the. Uh, property owners in that area and uh, so now um, there's another ten million dollar shortfall that I'm sure that they're going to figure out how to um, um, bring to the table um, so that's where we're at on it so we have not again we have not heard from the state they don't have it uh, uh, exactly uh, I believe it's probably through another uh, same kind of grant that we had before to the MEDC and um, so again, if this happens, we want to be ready for this. We need to be proactive through our planning commission and uh, everything that might happen in that corridor and area as uh, as it uh, comes before us. And we will certainly keep you informed as soon as we are notified by the state um, of what uh, what the next step is. All right. So now we're moving on down to the consent agenda, Mr. Wensley. All right, we move that Salem Township approve the following consent agenda items. We have the minutes of uh, December 11th, regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. Then we have disbursements for December out of the general fund. Uh, check roster of $604,826.19. That's checks 2827 through 2886. We have a payroll of $60,011.39, pay core of $193.64. Out of the sewer fund, we had disbursements of $9,946.78, that's checks 2061 and 2062. Escrow fund disbursements, $18,005.20, checks 1800-1805. And out of the USD, uh, the MEDC fund, we had uh, disbursements of $103,097.45, that's 32 to 35. Now for invoices out of the, for the month of January, out of the general fund, $30,527.38. The escrow fund, $1,000. Sewer fund invoices, $7,110. The MEDC fund in the sewer department, $27,378.27. And for water, $84,834.29. So that is the consent agenda. Do we have a second? Call second. John Daniel seconds. Any other questions on the uh, consent agenda? Okay. Yeah. Just a comment on the minutes of the last meeting. There was a reference to a motion that was made and not seconded. Um, the minutes don't have to be changed for future reference. Minutes that are, I mean, motions that are made and not seconded by the board don't have to be reported in the minutes. Right. Okay. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda is passed. Okay, moving down to business items under administrative, under the Planning Commission appointments. 
I move that Salem Township approve the following appointments to the Planning Commission for a three-year term beginning January 1st, 2019 and ending December 31st, 2021. Mr. Bart Kahn, Mr. Daryl Lewandowski, and Mrs. T.J. McLaughlin is our Township Board Liaison Person. Can I have a second on these? I'll second. Mr. Conver seconds. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's passed. All right, now we're down to reports. And uh, Mr. Chief Rockwell. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. So um, our central dispatch has gone to a new computer-aided dispatching as of 1 December. As a consequence, the uh, monthly reports that we were getting are not being produced. We've asked them to create those and we're hoping to have those in February as they work through the new dispatching system. There's been uh, a number of challenges on the dispatching system and we've been in contact with uh, Central Dispatch as a, as a collective group of all the fire chiefs and trying to work through those. Uh, so, sorry there's no summary report, but uh, we did have 61 calls in the month of December. Most notable was a structure fire in the park, the trailer park, which uh, thankfully one of the neighbors had heard, heard the fire alarm go off, saw smoke in the building and called us, which we were able to extinguish before it extended outside the bathroom. So good job by the neighbors by saving that structure. Uh, another significant call we had was on uh, New Year's Day. We had an ice storm come through uh, late in the evening. We had a jackknife semi completely shut down M14 at Gotherson going eastbound. Upon which we had another car go underneath the semi and another car that ended in the ditch. Thankfully all, all the uh, patients were probably um, nothing a critical injury in that manner, but uh, obviously shutting down M14 with an ice storm was a bit of a challenge in uh, pulling that truck out of there which we had to shut down the freeway, bring the truck the long way down the freeway once we got the truck out of the ditch. So ice storms are upon us. We've seen an increase with uh, accidents in the roadways. We've seen a number of residents and non-residents find their cars in the ditch. So we just asked, especially on that black ice, to kind of slow down. And uh, we did assist a number of residents by helping them um, extricate themselves without, uh, without injury. but. Uh, Again, we're starting to get into that uh, crazy sign of uh, women. Um, I think that's all I've got. Is there any questions the board may have? Thank you. You ordered the new fire truck, right? We have the, the new that's fire truck. That's order? It is, and uh, what we're waiting for is uh, the agreement to be signed, uh, countersigned by CEO saying that septic will be septic. Okay. And uh, we expect to meet with them probably later this month or early February to actually um, finalize the details of what they call the pre bid conference. <coughs> okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay, under board discussions, uh, I don't believe we have anything unless you have a question. Yes. Good question. Um, what's going on with the Hamlet Street State? Is that going to be done? Or were we working on that at all? <laughs> Good question. Um, <laughs> Glad you brought that up, the road commissioners. So we're kind of waiting from our engineers and the road commission. We believe that uh, I was promised by our planner that uh, this project would have started in the fall. <coughs> Otherwise, I told them to look for a new job. And we'll find some new consultants. And uh, they didn't uh, come through on that. That's, you know, Paul and Dick Carlisle. Yeah. So uh, some of the, I don't know if the information, I don't know if it's between uh, the, the, the road commission or the engineers, but um, we just, they are working on it, and I'm really hoping that we can maybe just have everything start at the same time. Those plans are on my desk. All right, there you go. We're, we're working through it with right. Paul and, and the team. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get you there. Yeah, we'll get everyone there that needs to get there. Right. So you can multitask. There we go. <laughs> and walk at the same time. <laughs> when it comes to roads. <laughs> so we're excited about that. We need a little facelift here in the town, and uh, I know for years they've been talking about it, and we really would like to see that happen. So uh, we got a great little town to be nice to spruce it up. Um, any other? 
Okay, if not any other board discussions, uh, we're down to the last public comment. Yes. I just wanted to give a big shout out to the Washtenaw Sheriff um, Department that sits on territorial and catches all the speeders that go through there. I hope they continue to do that. Um, and Arlene and I have seen a big difference in Great. them being there. So thank you, thank you, thank Great. you. All right, thank you. It's always good to hear positive comments. All right, anybody else? Okay, I don't have any other closing uh, statements uh, other than uh, next month is Valentine's Day. So uh, my wife is ready to go to Florida, so all the refreshments, uh, we're going to have, you know, so bring your loved one next meeting, and uh, we'll have a bunch of uh, Valentine's stuff, and then my wife takes off to Florida, then we just get uh, crackers and cheese. <laughs> so, uh, she'll have it prepared, so my kids will fill in and help out. So, again, Happy New Year, um, everybody, and, uh, and uh, I believe some of the guys will stick around, so if you have any questions for them, feel free to, uh, but enjoy the refreshments and hang out as long as you'd like. All right. Good night, everybody. Good job. Good job.